living he loved me dying he saved me buried he carried my sins far away rising he just freely forever one day he's coming hey y'all <laughs> good morning everyone I think I'm just going to talk over here. There's more people over here to talk to. <laughs> it looks good to see all these ladies up in the choir this morning. I'm looking forward to hearing from them, too. As far as announcements go this week, uh, we are having some special music, as you might have figured out already. And then on Thursday, we're having a candlelight service at 6 o'clock here in the church. Please remember that and come join us for that. That's always a great service. Jerry's got a great plan for that. So please remember that. Um, there are some birthdays coming up. We've had a couple already. Caden Lanier was on the 12th. Wanda's was last night or yesterday. Sue is coming up on th on Christmas Day on the 25th. So please remember Sue. And then Jackie's is next Sunday. So that's a lot of birthdays there. And then we have some anniversaries coming up. Bobby and Joanne's on Christmas Eve. What a Christmas present Joanne had, I tell you. <laughs> and then, do I, Bobby? Big, big that's right. <laughs> The gift that keeps on giving, that's right. <laughs> so happy anniversary to Bobby and Joanne as well. And then uh, Anthony and Crystal is having one on the 29th and one tonight on the last day of the year on the 31st. So uh, a few anniversaries coming up this month as well. And I think that's all the announcements I have. We have some prayer list additions. Please remember Miss Sue. Looks like she's got a, an attack of the gout going on, so please remember her. Miss Liv Bolton's a little under the weather. Please remember her. Wayne Pennington. Uh, Shane Chambers. Anna Lemons, and Tina Brooke is traveling, so please remember these as well. Anything else that we need comments on? Let's start our service this morning as we look to our God in prayer. Let's pray. Our God, our Heavenly Father, we do thank you so much that you've assembled us together again to come and to worship you this morning. Father, open our hearts to your word. Pour it in, Father, we ask, and help us to meditate upon it and draw us closer to you as this week comes on. But we thank you so much for this time of worship. Father, we also thank you for prayer, that you have given us this wonderful thing, that we can come before your throne and pour our hearts out. And we thank you that you have taught us well in how to pray. Be with us now as we pray the prayer together that you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Well, y'all sounded wonderful. I'm sure the angels and God is smiling. Because it's coming from your heart. Please let your friends, your family, know about our candlelight kind of service and its simplicity, but it's a powerful message. It's us coming together, thanking God for that wonderful gift that He's given us. If you turn in your Bibles to Luke chapter 1, excuse me, Luke chapter 2, beginning with verse 1. That's Luke chapter 2. Beginning with verse 1, let's hear what the Word of God has to tell us this morning. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all world should be taxed. And this taxing was made when Cyrenius was the governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, and to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and language of David. To be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child, and it is when it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them at the end. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were so afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born unto this day the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. And it came to pass, as the angels were gone away from the into the heaven, the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go into Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord had made known unto us. And they came in haste, and found Mary and Joseph, and the baby lying in a manger. And when they had seen it, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning this child. And all that had heard it wondered at those things which were told by them, the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all things that they had heard and seen as it was told unto them. Thanks be reading to God's Word. Some of my message this morning is going to come from Isaiah, and Isaiah kind of reflects on this beginning of what's happening in Luke. Christmas Eve is one of the darkest days of the year. Isn't that gloomy? Here I'm to put a damper on your Christmas Eve already, saying it's the darkest time of the year. Literally, it is dark. And today we have experienced only nine hours, 26 minutes of daylight, which leaves us more than 14 hours of darkness. So we've literally been in the dark, had we? More ways than one. The world around us seems dark as well, doesn't it? We've got climate change. This morning we get up, it's 21, 22 degrees. It's cold outside. Guess what Christmas is going to be? About 74 degrees, I think they said it was going to be. Now, some of us is not really not going to complain too much, but most of us like to see that white Christmas. The only one you're going to see if you watch it on TV from somewhere else. And also, we look at cyber attacks. You know, we, 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 we consider cyber attacks. We don't think much about that. But, you know, that could bring the country to the knees, too. All our electronics, you know, everything's getting to be electronic now, right? Everything's going by computers. Everything's going by this right here. You can't do anything anymore unless you're, you've got a computer just about. You pay your bills. You pay by it. When you go to the store, you can do all that stuff. So a cyber tax is a, con a concern. And there's global terrorism. We know that's a concern even in our country right now. We've experienced it, and it seems like it's getting to be more and more. Personal insecurity about relationships, jobs, health, and retirement. 
we worry about those things. Because when you get into our age, we already got our younger days of work and, and put in and invested into our retirements and, and to the end. And, and we want to see that we be able to live comfortably, not lavishly, but just comfortably. That we can live the rest of our lives without worrying about all these things, but we do worry. We're living in a world that feels that the line from the first nail well, like it was uh, a cold winter's night that was so deep, deep, deep darkness. And a lot of people get depressed during the winter time because they don't have much daylight. They only have the darkness, even in their lives. And they get depressed during this time of the year. You hear about more suicides happening during this time of the year. Why should it be depressing? Why should it be where people will take their own life during this time when we are here to celebrate the birth of our Savior? It's His birthday. We should be rejoicing and, and, and have joy in our life and others and spreading wonderful good news about the birth of the Savior. It shouldn't be the depressing and the things that conquer us upon this world in darkness. Because God sent His light his only begotten Son. He became flesh. He came and showed us the light. And you're going to see in some of the videos that I have coming up for in, in December 24th, Christmas Eve, you're going to see some powerful stuff and with the music in with it. And you're going to see some powerful things that's going to give you an image of what possibly could have happened. And, and sometimes the imagery and looking at things it really sinks in. Well, sometimes we can tell you, and you can hear it, but when you see something, it seems like it sinks more into you. And that's what I'm trying to accomplish on our Christmas Eve service. But we are not the first people of the face dark days. You know that? We're not the first people to do that. All the things that we're seeing now, even though it's faster and we see it more, as far as the media goes, it happened back in the time of the prophet Isaiah, about 700 years before the birth of Christ. Uh, the people of Israel were walking in darkness. They, they, they lived in the land of deep darkness, according to Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2. They lived in the land of deep darkness. They thought God had pulled away from them, and they don't even hear from God anymore. Their prayers wasn't answered. It was, just like it was dead. It was nothing. They listened. It was silent. God seemed silent, and they were greatly distressed over this. Isaiah tells us that they saw only distress and darkness and gloom and anguish, and they were thrust into thick darkness, according to Isaiah chapter 8, 21 and 22. Sometimes we feel that way. We feel like that we're thrown in that darkness. But you've got to remember, back then, there was no street lights. And when it was dark, most of the time there, it was black, dark. They couldn't hardly see their hand in front of the face unless they had some fire to be able to see. And with that, it's only limited. And with God being out of their life, that's what they felt like. That they were in totally despair. And even though we have days and moments like that, I believe we have more moments in joy. We have more moments that we see the light. There's going to be times in our life where we don't. We feel despair. We maybe feel like God has left us. And that's what they felt like. And we know what this feels like when this happens, doesn't it? I remember as a kid walking down a country road uh, when I lived in North Carolina. And during this country road, they didn't have the street lights like we have everywhere now just about. But I noticed one, one time I was walking, and I, like, I couldn't even see in front of my hand. It was that dark. The, you know, the, the, it seemed like there wasn't stars out to light up anything, the moon, but it was pitch black dark. And as a kid, yes, I was a little scared. I was waiting for anything to jump out of the woods at me, you know, and grab me or something like that. I guess I just died right there, but it was scary. And I thought I was tough. I'll walk home. <laughs> I didn't do it the next weekend. I didn't walk home at all. <laughs> Make sure I had a ride with lights. But we had those dark moments. Global terrorism is, distresses us because we don't know when we walk into a store or go to a movie or family functions when someone will come in and start shooting. We think about this now more so than anything. 
When we see a crowd of people at the mall, we're thinking, is that one of them? Is that one over there? I don't know. I've seen this video that someone put out. It's supposed to be like a prank. This guy was had his Muslim-type robe and stuff on and had a satchel. And he went up and didn't know what he was saying. The guy was sitting there, and he'd go, blah, 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 like it, and throw that satchel and run. Well, the first thing, this guy thought, well, this is a bomb, so they run. They thought that was funny. You know? I don't think it worked around here, that prank. Someone shoot him. Real quickly. And that's not a prank to me. That's not funny to me. We're scared enough about terrorism. And when we look at these things, we look at our economic, economic insecurity leaves us feeling empty. We, we, we're seeing that we're, we're gaining back a little bit. But you know, remember when it really was taken away from it, everybody was really scared, trembling. But when things start getting better, they start leaving the church. They start going back to their old ways. God gives us signs. He does things. And let us run to Him, get on our knees to Him. Let us come to church and worship Him and pray to Him about all these situations. And then when people get comfortable with it, a lot of them start leaving and going back to their old ways. Of course, we know about climate change, how one in California and all that out there, having all that rain and, uh, you know, they had the floodings just like we did in South Carolina here. There's some strange things going on with our climate. We blame it on everything else, but you know what? God's in control of that climate. He's in control of what happens in our climate. Maybe it is to wake us up a little bit. Cyber attacks, of course. It's like we're thrust into a thick darkness these days. It's like that we can't enjoy ourselves. Enjoy the Christmas season without thinking about robberies. It's more robberies during this time. It's more theft, break-ins. And we can't help to think about the darkness that we're thrusted into. And that's why Jesus sent His Son for that darkness. In that darkness, we can see that light. Everyone outside, complete dark, if you don't see any street lights, if you can go up to the mountains, sometimes you can see that. And you look way, way off, and you see a tiny light. And you're thinking, that tiny light and all this mass of darkness is there. And when I see that, I think of Jesus Christ. Out of all this darkness we have around the world, we have the light. The light of our Savior right there and for us to give us peace. The people of Israel saw a ray of light in the birth of a king, a new descendant of David. And it says, For a child has been for us a son given to us, says the prophet Isaiah. Authority resets upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That's in Isaiah chapter 9, verses 6. Prince of Peace. His kingdom shall be established. And it will be established. The king was the hope of the people of Israel. And the king is also for us. It's our future help. It was their future hope. And it still is our future hope. I caught and said in the Sunday school class about the flashlight. You know, you get real close. It's a little small beam. You get bigger and see it and see it. We see the big picture now. We see the big picture because God has sent His Word to show us the big picture from the darkest, darkest ages without Jesus Christ to the time we got Jesus and the time after that. Did all the darkness go away? Of course not. Jesus didn't say that. God didn't say that the darkness will be taken away. He's going to give you peace in that darkness. We have reason for hope today as well. Some children were born. Here's this 18-year-old guy named Tyler Wilson. And he says, I'm going to design a new, safer, more efficient nu nuclear reactor. And he did, which makes it safer for us now. A Kenyan teenager named Richard Taria, 
feared that the lions would eat the livestock of his family. So he built an automatic security system to kind of warn them. Jack Andraka, 16 years old, became angry about pancreatic cancer when it took one of his loved ones. Instead of cursing the darkness, he lit a candle. He developed a protein-based blood test that is much faster and more effective and cheaper than the current option, where they could find out quicker until it's too late. And he did this course while dealing with homework and being a, a kid. A child has been born for us, a son given to us, says the prophet Isaiah. God has born into us the Savior. And we look at our dark world and we see a lot of things that's going on in our world. But also we see there's some great things. There's some great things our youth is doing. There's some great things. We see some of our youth. We know we see some of them. We say, gosh, they're going to be taking care of us. We're going to be in big trouble. But there are those ones that God has sent and blessed us with. Caring children, smart children. Now we know that our children are smarter than us, but we ain't going to tell them, are we? We know that they know some things that we don't know, but you know what? We know too, but we just don't know if electronic, we might, we know it in life itself. Nothing changes there, does it? God said nothing under the sun will change, and our kids wonder how we know this stuff. We're smart. They know all this stuff. They make great grades. They do these things. But when you find out something about them, it's like, oh, how would you know? God gives us that gift too. But we can't label all children as bad. And I'll make sure there's bad and good. And there's some that's been successful in developing some of the things that saves our lives. You ever went to the doctor and got in there and the kid comes in like Dewey Hauser, you know, like he's only 17 years old to come to check you out? A little nervous there, isn't it? But that's part of God's gifts that he's planted for us. Just like he did children or see them being born who are succeeding in making the world a safer and more secure and healthier place. Our children are doing that. And we should encourage them. Always lift them up. And always teach them the way of Christ. To show God's love like He showed us by giving this birth of Jesus Christ. He was born to show us God's love and to be our Savior. That's why He was born. God wanted to show us His love for us. What other love can anyone give you than to give you their son and a son to be a sacrifice for your sins? I need us to say none of us would want to give our sons or daughters up to sacrifice for someone that's doing bad. Maybe they committed murder. Maybe they stole. Maybe they done this. Maybe they don't even follow God. But you're saying, why am I going to give my child for well, that person? But God did. For us. This baby was born to be crucified. To go through horrible times. For us. Now, how can we say God is evil? God is bad? God don't love me? When some tragic, some bad things happen to you, how can we look at God and say, God, you don't love me, you wouldn't have took this love one for me. Or you don't love me, but you wouldn't let this happen to me. How can we say God don't love us? When He gave that little baby and you're going to see this little baby go to the cross. 
be tortured, to be beat and mercifully stabbed in the side on the cross for you. That's what the birth of Christ is. Is our Savior. It's a cute little baby. A beautiful baby. A powerful baby. That's given by God for us. This season, the churches should be overflowing with thankfulness. It's our future hope in the middle of dark ages. Isaiah was right to say his authority shall grow continually. The authority of Jesus has only increased even now. We look more and more at his authority. And we again we look and say, Is God weak because he lets these things happen? We don't have a weak God at all. We have a very strong God. Now, he might not strike down. You said, well, he should have went ahead and killed these people before they killed these people. He should have, God should just take ISIS, for instance, and take them out completely. Wipe out that whole country. Wipe it out. That's our thinking. God's thinking, there could be some people in that crowd that will come to me and I will save them. God saves all people that comes to Him. He's not going to leave anybody behind that wants to come to Him. Yes, we fear ISIS. We fear this group. They worship to another God. They don't worship to a God that we worship to. But we pray to a God that can bring peace. We pray to a God that can save the souls of these people. If God saves the souls of these people, Will they attack us? No. God is love. God will change their hearts. So when we pray, don't pray for annihilation. Pray for salvation. That's love. God could not say to us, you're just a bunch of bad people. I'm not sending my son here. He gives us His only begotten Son for love. Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace in Luke 2.14. Peace during time of conflict and instability. Yes, the conflict's going to be there. Instability in our lives is going to be there. But God's going to have peace in the middle of it. He's going to give you peace to deal with it. Christmas is a season of future hope where the light of Christ enters the darkness of this world. And that's what we're going to be celebrating this week. Celebrating, even with our families, the gift giving, which is a gift from God. But let's remember that Christmas morning to be on your knees and pray to God, thanking Him for sending His Son. Don't forget to wish Jesus happy birthday. We forget that, don't we? We forget whose birthday it is. We get the gifts. (laughs) But what gift can we give God? There's nothing on earth, of course, we can give Him but our love. Our love and our dedication. That's what we can give God. Love and dedication. The birth of Jesus reminds us that children can change things for the better. Christ did, didn't He? And our children can do the same thing, and some do. So receive the light that is coming into the world this Christmas. Receive that light. So when things happen in this world, bad things, and When you're receiving this light, you embrace it, you accept it, any way you can. What righteousness really means is to a right relationship. 
So instead of cursing the darkness, light a candle. When things bad happen in your life, literally light a candle. Go in a dark room. Shut the door. Light that candle and pray and give thanks. And look around you of the darkness, but you can still see that light. That light of hope. Our future hope. Accepting and sharing the light of Christ is the best hope for our future. It is our future hope. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank you for the message this morning. We pray, Father, that we see your light in all this darkness. We're thankful for your Son that you've given us. We're thankful, Father, that you see us as people we're saving. We know we're sinners, Father. And you know that we cannot help it. The desires and things of this world just pulls us away from you. But we just ask that you continue to bring us back. To keep the Spirit inside our hearts. Thank you again, Father, for your Spirit being with us today. In Jesus' name, Amen.